Pete Wallfire here. You're in my railroad corner. Thought I'd talk a little bit today. A lot of my videos I produce here in I don't need to hear them lights flashing anymore. A lot of videos I produce, I may come over something like I'm a know-it-all, which I know little of anything. But I am kind of a jack of all trades, and you could say a master of none, but I am a master of one. I'm as expert as you can get on being a railway carman, and that comes from a good many years working for the railroad. Most of my viewers know that I work for the railroad uh, up until the point that I got forced into retirement from having a personal injury at home. I had read at 35 years with the railroad. Uh, when I got hurt at home, I fell down these basement steps over here, broke my shoulder, and tore out my rotor cuff completely. And it was a good year before I could raise my arm over my head. When your rotor cuff is gone, you can't do diddly with that arm. And um, so I didn't have no choice. I had to leave the railroad. It's not like I wanted to. I asked them, could I stay and do a office job or something? They said no. But when you get my age, when you get older, these companies, they just assume part with you and to put up with you just when they got to pay your insurance and everything else. So I thought I would do a series in the railroad corner, uh, and I'm going to call it the life of a railway carman, or a railway carman in the railroad corner, something to that effect. And I thought I'd just relate a few job skills uh, and different activities over the years that I worked for the railroad. And it would have to be a long, drawn-out series. So this would be the introduction to this um, series on being a railway carman. And it should lead to some interesting stories as they come to mind. I'm just speaking to you off the cuff. I haven't got any planned speeches. Uh, I could get out and write you something. There's plenty of stuff already written on my website carnocker.com. Quite a few of my stories are printed over there. And all my stories on YouTube. You can access. I'll put a link down in the description to some of my playlists if you're interested. But I thought maybe some of you would find that life of a railway carman of interest. And at times it can get downright comical some of the things we did at the railroad. So I just begin from the from the beginning and just start talking to you about um, my life with the with the railroad. I need to get more comfortable here. This is not the most comfortable chair. Let's get another seat. Finder. That's much more comfortable. Uh, where to begin? First of all, I should notice, note that I've been having a lot of trouble with my vertigo lately. Just another malady from old age. Um, in 1969, I went to work for the, the Southern Railway here in Atlanta, Georgia. And the picture of the train yard, or part of it, right here over my shoulder. I think it's in the viewfinder. If it's not, a lot of you have seen it. But I went to work for the Southern Railway. Uh, applied. They, the newspaper, Atlanta Journal, was advertising for car repair me. I think this is the way they listed it. And having just got out of the Navy, 
I told my father to give me a ride down to the Southern Railway building. And this is a long drawn out story about how I got a job at the railroad. So I'll put a link in the description right here that give you a better idea. If you go to my website, carnocker.com and look it up, or just go to the link provided in, uh, might have to scroll up and down the page a little bit because there's quite a few stories on each page. But you might find the story, my story of how I got a job with the railroad of interest. So I'm not going to try to draw out to mention that and make my videos too drawn out. I'm just going to start from, basically try to cover a little bit of the skills of a railway carman, what we did while I was working there. And uh, maybe mention a few stories that y'all might find of interest. Let's go back to, well, they sent us to a school to learn to be a carman. That lasted two or three months. And basically we just memorized this book right here, or a version of it. It's updated every year. And it's the Bible, so to speak, or a set of rules set down by the Association of American Railroads on how rail car trains have to be inspected and repaired. And that's what I did for 35 years and up until the point I got hurt and had to leave the railroad. I didn't want to go but didn't give me no choice when I fell down these basement steps here in the house and injured myself. That would be a good place to start the story I guess. My wife was due to have sinus surgery that morning. And I had just got up and I went down the hallway and it was dark. I thought I was going towards the bathroom, but I was disoriented and what I was, the basement door was standing open. Usually it's closed. And I thought I was turning down the hallway, but all I did was step into the basement and I fell 13 flights of stairs, 13 steps not 13 flights, 13 steps down and landed, tumbled all the way down the steps and tore out my roller cuff completely right here on this side. And man, I was bruised all up and down my body. I, I was lucky I didn't get killed. Now, all the many times in the railroad that I got hurt, never was that serious. And um, took me to the hospital in the ambulance. And I told my wife, call the railroad and tell them I won't be there today. Uh, I had an accident and I won't, I won't be there today. Well, she told them, I don't know how the conversation went, but they said, tell him, don't come back without a doctor's excuse. And you know, I never did get an excuse to go back. Uh, turned out you got to be able to live. 10 pounds over your head to keep that job that I had you know, thoroughly enjoyed for 35 years. And I was as close as you can be to what you would call an expert railway carman. I worked all the different jobs in the train yards over the years, not just a few. Some people would go out there and stay in one area of expertise in the car department. And we'll cover some of that in my series. But uh, I was kind of trying all the crafts. I mean, all the duties of a carman. I worked in train yards. I worked in, on the road. I worked in the repair shops. I did it all. Let's go back to my first day on the railroad. Just got out of the Navy, and uh, they put me on the north end of the forwarding yard. Well, one of the jobs back then was what they called box packing. And the duties of a box packer was to carry a big oil can. We had a lot of friction bearing cars back in them days. Uh, there was quite a few roller bearing cars around too. 
nowadays all the railroad has is roller bearings. Uh, most of your friction bearings are all obsolete. The duty of a box packer was to walk down the side of the train. Well, the more responsibility to it than that, but the main duty was to carry this oil can and open the journal boxes on the truck side of each axle, look in there to see if there was any oil, pour some oil in there if need be, and close the journal box lid back down after looking in there to make sure everything looked okay. Now you would walk down the side of the train and uh, looking for other defects. I'll cover some of those defects in detail as another point in this story. But uh, it just looks like you're walking up and down the train pouring oil in the boxes. And basically that's what we did. We had a, a hook and a packing paddle. On. Got a pack and pedal right there on the wall. We'll cover that deep, that duty one day too. But it's my first day on the railroad. They put me on a box packing job for about a week or two after we got out of the Carmen's training school up in Marietta. We were just as green as we didn't know deeply about the railroad. Handed me this oil can, put me with some old timer going down the I don't remember who I was working with. But we're going down that train looking at different defects and what little bit of training I had at that point from looking. I was looking, dumping oil in the boxes, being overly diligent, pouring oil out into the journal boxes. And we're going down the forwarding yard. I'm on the right hand side of track two or three in the forwarding yard. Track one and two is open. There's a wide open shot. There's no other trains in one and two. So I got a clear view of the road over beside the train yard. And as we approach what they call eight speaker, the middle of the forwarding yard, I'm thinking the whole time as we walk down the train, what have I got myself into? I hope there's more to this job than just dumping oil in these boxes. This could get old in a hurry. I'm already old, about a uh, hundred cars already, and we ain't even got to the end of the train. We got down there by the eight speaker, and this was on a daylight job. This was in the daylight. It was about, oh, I guess by that time it was 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning. You could see this little old shack over there beside the train yard. And it was where the carmen that worked air jobs in the forwarding yard hung out. Well, I see these men standing out there by the shack, and a car drives up and gets out. And it's another guy, and he's got a fifth of Jack Daniels or Jim Beam or some kind of whiskey. And he was obviously three sheets to the wind. And being an ex Navy man, I know a drunk when I see one. I've done my share of being drunk myself. I know all about drinking. But you don't get a new job with a railroad and go out there and participate in such activities and hope to keep your job. Well, I'm not going to name this guy's name, but it turns out he was a foreman with the railroad. He was actually working a foreman's job, but he was out there on his off time come to visit whoever the carman was working at Eight Speaker that day. And I guess he'd been out partying and was drunk all night or something. He's standing out there by the shack with his bottle of liquor. And I guess they told him, look at them new carmen walking down the train over there. Don't they look spiffy? Me, of course, you know, young, 21 years old, trying to look like I know what I'm doing. So this guy yells out at me. I didn't know he was a railroad employee at the time. Hey, car man, holding up this bottle of whiskey. Do you want a drink? I ignored him. Put some more oil in one of the boxes, and he got louder. Hey, car man, I'm getting closer to him. Going by this um, box car with the journal box lids open, so I get all them oil. Come on, car man, don't you need a drink? 
you need a drink. And I said, go on, mister, leave me alone. I'm trying to do my job. And he was laughing and carrying on, and I'm thinking, what the hell have I got myself into here? <laughs> this drunk's hanging out in the train yard. And uh, I learned over the years it was hobos and everything else. I sure had my run-ins with them. But that was my first day on the job that I remember. Hey, car man, do you want a drink? Well, by the time you get to the end of that train, you're pretty tuckered out. You gotta work another train back to the north end. That's over a mile. And I guess we could cover some of the duties of uh, box packing. Now, one of my viewers today put a video out about graffiti on cars. I'm going to put a link in the description, if I can remember, of Herbie. Um, Herbie was the original graffiti you see on the side of the train. We saw it for years. As you're all in the boxes on a train, we carried, we had our gloves on. We had a, a wooden holder for a, what lumber crayon, really what it is. It's a piece of chalk about that long. And we use it to write on the side of the cars. When you get to the end of each car, if it's an outbound train, I think at that time my seniority number was 155. So there was 155 carmen with more seniority with me working at m and Yards or working in Atlanta. So when you get to the end of the car, I had about 155, a big A, and then whatever the date was. So you could do it in a hurry, 155 A23, and circle it. That's, your, that's what you call a pull mark. And um, if anything happens to that train when it gets to New Orleans or wherever it happens to be going between Atlanta and New Orleans, they knew who the last person was that inspected that train. And as far as all in boxes and stuff, that would have been me. The airman who works the air, coupling air hoses and putting on air hoses, he had a place to put a mark on the end of each car too. So they had a way of knowing who looked at the train. You actually documented the fact that you worked the train. And that type of graffiti, we would see on box cars on the end of it a lot. Uh, in fact, hobos had codes they would put on uh, different trains and cars and shacks in the train yard. Uh, some of them, I didn't know what they meant, but I saw their markings all the time. And I uh, had more than my share of run-ins with the hobos. But fortunately, I learned that being a box packer wasn't all there was to that job. Um, over the years, I worked a lot on the repair track. Repair track is actually repairing the cars, doing things like putting in couplers and draft gears and uh, welding broke brackets and new ladders and ladder treads. Just hundreds of jobs that we had to do to repair them trains. And let's see, I worked three and a half years in the receiving yard, that's the inbound yard in the Emmon yards. We'll cover some details about that in another story. Um, I worked the extra board, I worked the overtime board a lot. And when you work my overtime, say a carman in the boarding yard marked off sick, they would ask you, you know, say I just worked a second shift. You want to stay and work the third shift too? Joe is marked off or Tom or whoever. And if I wanted to make some money, yeah, I'll work the third shift. Where do you want me? So you're going to work an air job um, in the north end of the forwarding yard. Now this north end of the forwarding yard, the center of the forwarding yard, and the south end. And all, all karma would be at each place. 
on the north end. It was usually more than that because they built a lot of trains out of him and yards. And um, it's hard to keep my train of thought on what I was going to say. That medicine I took with a vertigo was starting to make me drowsy. A lot of the jobs that we did out there were difficult, often dangerous, and uh, I was fortunate that I didn't get hurt more. There was times when I had accidents. The railroad frowns on accidents really bad. Some of my stories on the railroad refer to getting having an accident. One of them would be uh, the bug in your ear story. You got a bug in my ear. You might want to read that sometime. If I can, I think I might have told the story here on YouTube. If I did, I'll look for it and see if I can find a link for it to put it down in the description. Uh, I encourage you to listen to that story. This video is probably getting pretty drawn out. I don't want to make my videos too long. So I'm going to conclude this video today. And if you like the idea of me doing uh, my life as a railway carman, let me know with some comments down below. There's lots of stories I can share with you over the years of things that happened to me and things that I did and things that I should have did and things that I did wrong. And a good many that I did right. But I will tell you that I enjoyed my career with the railroad. Uh, I'd do it all over again, and it's one of the things I, I really loved my job. And that's one thing I want to pass on to you viewers out there. Whatever your occupation is or whatever you do, you got to like what you're doing. If you not, if you don't like what you're doing, you're in the wrong career. Go find something you like doing. Because your life passes by really fast, and before you know it, you're at the end of your career. You're an old man sitting home making videos on YouTube. Appreciate you listening today, and your comments are welcome. There's people all part saying, we'll catch y'all in the railroad corner on another day.